Uh, all right, I'm going to jump to the next story here. There was a fascinating survey that came out today on Friday from the Pew Research Center. And the bottom line of this survey, let me share this with you. Uh, eight in 10 Americans say religion is losing influence in public life, uh, which at first I saw the headline. I was like, I love that. I wish religion was losing influence in public life. That sounds wonderful. But then when you dig into the data, it gets it's not as exciting as it seems. But here's the thing the Pew Research Center was talking about. This is the, the main chart. The share of Americans who say religion's influence is declining is as high as it's ever been. So what percentage of U.S. adults say religion is losing influence in American life? You could see at the dark blue at the top here, it's higher than it's ever been. 80% of Americans say religion is losing influence. Only 18% say it's gaining influence. But also, as much as I wish that were true, that religion was losing influence, it's absolutely not losing its influence. If anything, if you've watched anything I've talked about for the past several weeks, it's gaining an influence and it's gaining an influence in the worst possible ways because you can no longer separate Republican politics and policies from what the Christian nationalists want. So right now, religion and specifically conservative Christianity is as powerful, more powerful than it has ever been. So this idea that 80% of Americans say it's losing influence, like they're wrong, but also they seem very ignorant of what's actually happening here. I want to go through some of the things that were in this survey because it's worth digging into the numbers specifically. Check out this uh, graphic right here. Okay, 49% of America. Okay, so this is where some of these numbers are coming from. 49% of Americans say religion's influence is declining, and that's bad. Look at this light blue. It's, well, the far over there, the far left number here, the 8% say religion's influence is growing, and that's a good thing. Those people live in crazy town because it's not, I mean, it is growing, I would argue, but that's not a good thing because it's the worst kind of religion. But look at the lighter blue next to it. 49% of Americans say religion's influence is declining, and that's bad. That's about half of America right there. They want to see more religion in our public life. And it's like, ah, I don't think, I think you need to explain what you mean by religion. But overall, you could see what it says is 57% of Americans have a net positive view of religion. They either want it to be growing and that's a good thing, or they say it's declining and that's bad. Because all of those people think in the blue, they say we want religion to be more powerful because that's a good thing. You could see only 19% of Americans, that's in the orange and red over there, only 19% of Americans have a negative view of religion. They think it's growing in influence and that's bad, or it's declining in influence and that's good. So like, those are the big numbers right there. Uh, but let me talk about a couple, I mean, let me back away from the numbers for a second. If you believe, as I do, that religion is a largely pernicious force in the United States, I mean, you can just point to religion to see how it influences anti-abortion laws, anti-LGBTQ policies. It gives Donald Trump the support he needs to make another run for the White House. Like, that's what religion in the United States has done lately. Then these results suggest we have a long way to go. And by we, I mean the people who might watch a live stream like this one. We have a long way to go when it comes to educating Americans about why they are better off without faith playing a significant role in our lives. Um, and again, I know religion is not synonymous with Christianity, but when we talk about religion's influence in our society, it's kind of hard to separate the two. Like no other religion in America has the power of Christianity and no kind of Christian has as much outsized, unfortunate influence as conservative Christians do. Like, listen, if progressive Christians had all the power, we'd be having a very different conversation. Um but look at a, let me show you one other thing, because this I found kind of funny. Uh, what about the presidential candidates? Do people think Joe Biden and Donald Trump are religious? 
This is amazing to me. Look at this. Look at Joe Biden first. When it comes to Republicans, how many, what percent of Americans, of Republicans, say Joe Biden is very religious? By the way, correct answer is he's absolutely very religious. He's super Catholic. He doesn't like abortion. You know what I mean? That's what I mean by he's super Catholic. But publicly speaking, when it comes to his policies, he's doing what Democrats want him to do by and large, minus everything happening in Israel and Gaza. Um, but look at this. Only 3% of Republicans say he's very religious, and only 26% of Americans say he's somewhat religious. Like, that's objectively wrong. And even among all U.S. adults, only 54% that's in the dark gray and the light gray at the top there, only 54% of Americans seem to think Joe Biden is religious at all. Like, what are you doing? He absolutely is. Those people are so wrong about that. Now, meanwhile, let's look at Donald Trump above my head here. Among Republicans, 6% of Republicans say Donald Trump is very religious. I don't know where the hell those people are coming from. 44% think he's somewhat religious, whatever the hell that means. Like, what are those people doing? I know Donald Trump pays lip service to the religious right, and he does whatever the religious right wants. But how dumb do you have to be to think Donald Trump is very religious or even somewhat religious? What are... No, not even close. Like, he's not an atheist. He never thinks about religion because he's too busy thinking about himself. But all of these people, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> his decisions are not based on his personal religious views. He's not Mike Johnson. He's not thumping you over the head with the Bible all the time. Um, but because Joe Biden doesn't do that either, they think he's practically an atheist. Um, one thing I found interesting in all this data they had here in the Pew Research stuff, is that, you know, in 2015 and 2016, Christian leaders, I remember this, I'm old enough to remember this, Christian leaders spent a lot of time attempting to explain how Donald Trump may not act or sound like one of them, like referring to his two Corinthians gaffe or how he brags about, you know, his sexually abusing women. Yeah, he doesn't talk like us and his lifestyle isn't like us. But he's, but they said he's working on it. They didn't just say he was good for judges. That was a little too transactional at the time. They said he's working on it. I, James Dobson, the founder of Focus on the Family and a very powerful evangelical in his own right, said in 2016 that Trump had recently become born again, that he personally knew who led Donald Trump to Christ. And then he added, Donald Trump was a baby Christian which, I mean, half right. These days, you do not even see Christian leaders trying to do that. No one on the Christian right is pretending that Donald Trump is a Christian. They can't get away with it because we know too much about the guy. So they decided, you know what? Even Christians don't believe my lies about this. So now they're just like, listen, if you're conservative Christian, Trump isn't one of us, but like maybe God is acting in a mysterious way and Trump will give us all the policies and judges we want. So, you know, hold your nose and go vote for him. That's what they're doing now. Because even they know they can't convince Christians that Donald Trump is Christian. And yet all those Republicans still say Trump is Christian, which is bananas. The funny thing about that is, you know, Jimmy Carter, for example, deeply religious, famously religious, and I would argue like the living embodiment of the best kind of Christianity. Um, and yet, you know, all those Republicans would be like, Jimmy Carter is not religious. He's a heathen, uh, which, again, makes no sense at all. But that's how warped their minds are right now. Uh, by the way, somewhere else in the survey, it said 67% of Republicans said Trump stands up for people of faith. OK, only one kind of faith, but OK. And white evangelicals, 69% of white evangelicals said he stands up for their faith. But the gap between his rhetoric and his reputation and what he actually believes, like that's never been wider. Okay, moving on to a different part of the Pew survey. Like what about religion in general? Have conservative Christians, for example, gone too far in imposing their views on the government 
and in public schools? That was a question they asked. Let me show you those results for a second. I'll blow this up so you can see it. Um, and basically, the answer is yes. I mean, conservative Christians have obviously gone too far. We wouldn't be talking about book bans and all the anti-trans legislation around the country and anti-abortion stuff if there wasn't an undercurrent of conservative Christianity steering lawmakers in a harmful direction. But look at this. Only, I'm looking at the far left here, uh, conservative Christians have gone too far in trying to push their religious values in the government and public schools. Look at this. Only 48% of U.S. adults say conservative Christians have gone too far. 49% say no. What world are they living in where conservative Christians have not gone far enough in all of these issues? Like, what the hell are they talking about? And this is even more damning. When it comes to liberals who are not religious, secular liberals, hey, people like us, have they gone too far in trying to keep religious values out of the government and public schools? 50% of U.S. adults at the top there said yes. Half of Americans think people like us have gone too far in keeping religion out of government and public schools. And I want to remind you, what does it look like when we're trying to keep religion out of public schools and government? We are not saying let's teach kids to be atheists. Let's impose atheism on the world. That never happens. Our side says, hey, maybe keep it neutral, keep church and state separate and do what's best for the people in these communities and for the country. Neutrality is what we're fighting for. What are conservative Christians fighting for? For a warped vision of how they think, what whatever they think the Bible is telling them to do. But half of Americans think they have, those conservative Christians don't go far enough. They're fine with whatever conservative Christians are doing. But half of Americans think us fighting for religious neutrality are going too far and pushing our secular liberalism. Like, that is just misinformation seeping into the public discourse. And that's disturbing. As if neutrality is the same thing as being anti-religious. That's the power of the conservative media environment right there. Whether it's Fox News or social media that is run by conservatives or the whole right-wing Joe Rogan eco chamber, echo chamber, I should say, like many Americans are being spoon-fed lies about what is actually going on to the point where half of them think we're the bad guys for pushing neutrality. And by the way, here's a perfect example of how bad the education is on these issues. The Pew Research Center asked people about Christian nationalism. Have you heard of Christian nationalism. And look at this. This is disturbing. Americans' view of Christian nationalism have been stable. So from September of 2022 to February of 2024, last month, how many people have heard about or read about Christian nationalism? It's 45% then, it's 45% now. That number hasn't budged. And even when you break it down by specifics, whether they like it or they're against it, those numbers have barely moved. What percentage of people have never heard or read about Christian nationalism? It's identical, 54%. More than half of Americans have never heard of Christian nationalism. Like at a time when, the, when Christian nationalism is the basis for the Republican platform, basically, for Project 2025, which is the blueprint for what Republicans plan to do if they control enough of the government. The fact that most Americans, 54% of Americans, have no clue about that link between conservative Christian ideology and government, that is a failure of communication. And you can blame a lot of people for that, but specifically, you have to blame mainstream journalists for not talking about it enough. You have to dame, blame Democratic Party leaders for not mentioning it all the damn time. Like, I think they're so afraid of criticizing faith at all that they're now failing to condemn the most destructive form of it. And that should scare all of us because that should be an easy win for the people who talk about it. <sighs> Let me point you to something else that was also in this survey. Oh my God, there was so much disturbing stuff. Let's talk about church-state separation. Should the government 
Keep church and state separate. Look at this. 55% of adults said the government should enforce the separation of church and state. That's good. But only but 16% said no, they shouldn't be doing that. And 28% said they have no opinion. Like, if only a little more than half of Americans say, yeah, I'm for church-state separation, that's not nearly as high as it should be, and that's disturbing. Then look at this. What percentage of adults say the federal government should declare Christianity the official religion of the U.S.? 13% seriously want a theocracy. To hell with church-state separation. And you know those 13% put on their MAGA hats and are like, I'm a patriot, and they carry around their little pocket constitutions, but they want a theocracy. What, what percentage say, no, we shouldn't declare Christianity the official religion of the U.S., but we should promote Christian moral values? That's 44% of Americans. What the hell? This is how you know it's bad, because they think Christianity is synonymous with goodness, and if anyone's been paying attention, you know it's not. And of course, if we had the power, this is Christian nationalism, that middle batch, because they'll go out and say like, no, we're not trying to form a theocracy. We just think it's a Christian nation and we should do whatever the Bible tells us. Like that middle 44%, that's the Christian nationalist base right there. That's why that group is so powerful because they think, oh, they're promoting Christianity. That's a good thing. And yeah, what does that mean in practice? Uh, in practice, that means, yeah, let's just harass LGBTQ people. Let's force ourselves upon women because they don't they don't have the ability to make decisions. Let's make it for them. Put Ted Cruz between your legs. He knows what's better for ladies. So all of that, that is a failure of education on our part. I did want to I want to leave you with at least some good news from this report. Um and here's one thing I wanted to show you. Look at this. Most U.S. adults, they have a positive view of religion's role in American life. We talked about that already. But look at this. When you look at age breakdown, I'm going to blow this up a little more here. Oh, I lied. I can't really break it up. Oh, there we go. Look at these numbers. What this is saying, I'm going to scroll up here so you can see it. Who has a positive view, a net positive view of religion? If I scroll back down here, look at the age breakdown. For people ages 65 and up, 72% of the elderly have a positive view of religion. But notice what happens as you get lower and lower. Look what happens for people under the age of 30. It is cut in half. Only 36% of people ages 18 to 29 have a positive view of religion. And look at the right side here. Who has a net negative view of religion just above my head? Among young people, 30% of young people have a negative view of religion. It's only 10% of the elderly. So the long-term trends here are not good for organized religion. And the people who want to blend religion and government... I mean, again, they have too much power right now. They want to get more of it. But young people especially uh, are not happy with it. And I would also point out that young people under the age of 30, they are the ones that are most affected by anti-abortion laws, anti-contraception laws, anti-IVF laws, anti-sex laws. They're the ones who are in the stage of either having children or thinking about having children. So they're directly affected by what Christian lawmakers are trying to do, and they don't like it. And I hope Democrats are smart enough to jump on that when they're uh, trying to make a move here, when they're trying to persuade people otherwise. Um, I would also suggest, you know, elsewhere in this report, it also said there was a line, it suggested there was a line of attack Democrats could use because 72% of Democratic voters said conservative Christians have gone too far in pushing their beliefs, which is why I think Democratic candidates need to exp openly express their support for church-state separation. They need to say, if you elect me, I'm going to block these right-wing faith-based bigots from taking away our freedoms. And by the way, 23% of Republicans feel the same way. And that means those potential campaign ads could also speak to some of those 
Republicans, and you better believe a hell of a lot of independent swing voters too, um, because it's a powerful thing to campaign on. So I would think the possibility of an impending theocracy if in practice, if not in name, you would think that would make more, more voters care about these issues. But again, most Americans don't pay any attention to politics. They are apathetic about Christian nationalism and right-wing politics. But there are several months before election day and people who understand what we are up against, and that's probably all of you, do everything you can to educate the people around you, educate voters, about Christian nationalism, why it's a bad thing, why religious influence in politics hurts everybody. It hurts all of our lives because that's what we need to do if we want to fix this before the problem gets worse and then uh, to the point where we can't fix it anymore. <sighs> Going to pause there to take some questions. Oh, thanks for that. As a mental health professional, I have seen religious organizations take advantage of people with mental illness constantly. It's predatory. You know, I don't doubt that for a second. Um, and again, there are religious groups that do good work, but I would wish, I, I wish those groups that are doing good work are the first ones in line to condemn the religious groups that are doing it badly. And a lot of times they're the ones who are silent about everything, which is always really depressing because it means more coming from them, you know? But thank you for that, Super Chat. I agree. I've heard interviews with people who do polling and they say the vocabulary is often used to manipulate people's answers. And that is true. There is push polling. There is, you know, if you hear words like Christian nationalism without a definition, you may not know what that means. So I'm not saying you got to use the terminology that is known to people who follow politics, but trying to make the case that one religious group should not get to decide policy that affects everybody I think a lot of people could get on board with that idea that, of course, that's a bad thing. So again, it's about educating people in ways they will that will reach them, that will affect them, that will change their minds. And for all of you, this is something all of us can do, um, whether it's working as an election uh, uh, official or something like that. You know your circle of friends. You know what arguments it might take to convince them of something. And if you know people, they trust you. So you make the case to them because you won't get to maybe reach millions of people, but you can reach your circle of friends, your colleagues in some way. And if you live in a swing state, man, I hope you are doing everything you can to convince people around you to vote for Democrats uh, and then, you know, work to make the Democrats do exactly what you want. But I promise you things are going to get worse if you're voting for Republicans at any level. Uh, who did this survey? I questioned their method for finding respondents. It is the Pew Research Center. And I will admit uh, they tend to do some of the best work in terms of making sure they are hitting a demographically representative group of Americans. Um, of all the criticism I've heard of polling, they Pew Research is pretty damn good at doing this stuff. So um, I, I usually like their surveys. Doesn't mean I like the results, as you could see from this one, but they usually do a really good job of making sure they are reaching as many representative Americans as possible. I see conservative Christians openly targeting people who are vulnerable adults on Social Security by exasperating their symptoms, convincing them to give what little money they have. Yeah, I, man... I, I agree. I know it's happening. It's really frustrating. And it's so hard when shit's flying at you from every single corner. It is hard to try to stop it all at once. So sometimes you just have to try to aim your mark and say, okay, well, this is bad. Let's try to stop this. And then you aim elsewhere. But again, this is an overall problem that I wish more people with large platforms would talk about. One problem I see is that schools shy away from even teaching about world religions and their powerful influences past and present. I I wonder where that's happening because, I mean, good schools do teach the basics of world religions. I don't need them to say, here's why Christianity is bad. I don't need them to do that. I don't want them to do that. Um, but again, I my worry is not necessarily with what middle schoolers or high schoolers are learning about religion. It's that it's so easy for adults to check out 
and not pay any attention to any of this stuff because politics is boring and the news is boring and it makes me depressed. And like, I get that. Um, and the fear is that the people who are in a position to make those decisions and vote and run for office I mean, the people who are running for office are the people who have a vested interest in this stuff, and it's usually not the good kind of interest. Um, but the people who can vote often shy away. They don't want to talk about this. They don't want to think about this. They don't vote. Apathy is the enemy right now. So trying to get people to understand, like, no, I need you to care about this because it affects all of us, that's the hard thing to convince them. And it's, again, just pointing out, trashing Christian nationalism, which is totally legitimate and a good thing to do, is not the same as trashing Christianity. Like, there are plenty of Christians who should be against Christian nationalism um, and what conservatives are doing in the name of their God. So, like, we can have a separate discussion about religion itself. I, like, go talk to Matt Dillahunty about that stuff. I'm talking about the, the despicable version of Christianity that plays a role in politics in the worst way. Because uh, that's what these people are trying to do, and it's scary. Do people know what nationalism is? Probably not. <laughs> they don't know what white nationalism is. They don't know what uh, Christian nationalism is. They just think, I'm guessing they probably just think it's patriotic. Nationalism is good. I love my country. That's my fear. And again, it's this is the verbiage thing that don't use the language of Christian nationalism. Describe what it does. Who should be making decisions? Who should be making your medical decisions? Should it be you and your doctor or should it be a Republican in office who is hell bent on making the decisions for you because he thinks Jesus is telling him what to do? That's a frightening thought. Who takes these polls? I've never had the opportunity to take one. Um, I mean, that's the thing about representative samples. They will sample thousands of people, but in a country of hundreds and hundreds of millions, yeah, it may not reach you specifically. Um, but if you go to the Pew Research Center's website right now, you could see their methodology. They are very comprehensive in explaining how they reached people, what they did to get to people, and uh, you could see what they're doing. 